It's official, the most expensive part of buying a barrel of oil is the barrel. Sorry I'm rocking a less 5 o'clock, more midnight shadow, but I just put this episode together in a bit of a hurry. As of the recording of this episode, you can get a whole barrel of crude for the price of a foot long sub. To put that in perspective, the oil price is generally between $50 and $100 a barrel. So what the heck just happened? Because as of last week, I was doing a report about how all the OPEC leaders had come together to hold hands, sing kumbaya, and cut oil production by the largest amount in history. Well, the problem is, nobody wants it. If I cough into 50 plastic baggies and my solution to not being able to sell them is, well, I'm only going to cough into 20 plastic baggies. That's right, less supply, want it now? Then I'm in business trouble. Now, some of you might be scratching your heads quite a bit because, uh, doesn't America really, really, really want oil? It was that in razor phones that defined the early 2000s. Well, the problem comes down to both a breakdown in supply and demand. First, locking down two thirds of the world population isn't great for boosting demand in transportation. Similarly, during a pandemic, Locking yourself in a large tube with a bunch of strangers on the water or in the air is not in demand. The only people still buying things from airlines and cruise industries is Congress. Hot tip though, cough once and you get both the armrests. So that's the demand side of the problem. Let's get to supply. Didn't the OPEC nations just cut the heck out of the supply of oil? Some breaking news now. The world's largest oil producers have agreed to the biggest ever cut in oil production. Well, let's unfurl that mission accomplished banner and pat ourselves in the back for a job well done. Oh wait, the price of oil is officially negative in some areas? Which means that some producers are literally paying people to take oil off their hands? Well, let's quietly refurl that mission accomplished banner. The problem here is supply. Countries saw the super cheap oil and thought, now's a great time to refill our strategic oil reserves. And then they refilled their strategic oil reserves. Seeing the prices were still super low, they thought, well, there's a hole over there that could perfectly fit some oil. Maybe I'll turn that into a storage site. So they filled that up too. Seeing the oil prices were still low, they thought, well, shoot, what the heck else can I do with all this oil? I mean, we could really light up the Statue of Liberty's torch, or hear me out, crank up the showmanship a little bit on that eternal flame. Eternal inferno. I'd visit that. Point is, countries shove cheap oil into every nook and cranny they could fit it in. And yet, more oil kept coming. At this point, Uncle Terry's pool might soon be part of the strategic oil reserve. Because of this, a few things are happening. First, during the OPEC negotiations, Mexico negotiated that they would have to cut their production by significantly less than other countries, meaning they'd get to make more oil. Turns out, that was a terrible idea. Mexico's state-owned oil company officially has too much oil and nowhere to store it all. This means that they are literally just pumping it into tankers and other vehicles with no destination. Just floating. The current cost of holding cargo in a ship off of a major Mexican port past the delivery date is $25,000 a day. There are at least six tankers carrying fuel anchored off of Mexico's east coast, and there are other freighters just sprinkled across the rest of the Mexican coasts. This is why they're literally just paying people to get all this damn oil off of their hands. Of course, Mexico is not the only one reeling in this epidemic. Enter United States future traders who are in an almost comical problem. We'll just put it this way. The futures look bleak. A future is essentially a contract between a buyer and a seller to, at a future point, buy a set amount of an asset at a set price. In this case, oil. When someone enters a future contract, they are obligated to carry out the transaction for the underlying asset in the future at the delivery date, no matter how profitable or unprofitable it ends up being. This is generally not a problem, but guess what? Oil is finally arriving from Saudi Arabia and it's yours. Congratulations. 
Futures traders who would normally be able to shift from the expiring contract to the next are finding very few buyers for the expiring May contract. Because very few people want to actually take delivery of oil barrels right now, leaving it something of an orphan. Of course, this begs the obvious question, what are you going to do with all this oil? Well, for the first time in history, people are actually paying other traders to take these futures off of their hands. Stevens cough in a bag patent pending isn't looking like that bad of an idea anymore, is it? At least you can store those. So what's the effect of this complete mismatch of supply and demand? Well, one of the first effects is, I think Bernie Sanders might have made a deal with an evil genie. Now is the time to end fracking. Well, your wish is my command. U.S. shale producers need 40 to $50 a barrel to pay the high yield bonds they use for financing. And well, I wouldn't hold my breath for those prices anytime soon. Quite a few shale companies are probably going to go out of business unless the government steps in. And oh boy would that be quite the partisan fight. This industry gives America negotiating power on the global stage when it comes to oil market and sales, and it provides a lot of high paying jobs domestically. Only problem is that some of those high paying jobs are class action lawyers, medical professionals, and toxic cleanup crews. Now one other group being hit particularly hard are countries that really went all in on their oil industry a few years ago especially your Irans and Venezuelas. Nobody wants what you're selling right now, and you're going to have to pay to store it. I mention Iran and Venezuela specifically because on top of their one export being worth about as much as a blockbuster gift card, America is actively blocking aid to those countries. Because their oil companies are state owned, well, their revenue is non-existent right now which is not a great position to be in during a global health crisis and pandemic. Beyond that, in a lighter note, if you've ever wanted to own a tanker full of oil and get paid to do it, well, today might be your lucky day. Shipping is about to be very cheap if you're a barrel half full kind of person, and if you need to drive anywhere, I've heard gas is less than a dollar a gallon. Great value for your Hummer during your next liberate the state protest. Not gonna find a Prius in that crowd. So that's what's currently happening with oil prices. Until next time, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. First I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Lastly, and a little early on that thumbs up, give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. And lastly, as always, thank you for watching.